Hello guys, this is Shuradeep once again and you are watching Kojava tutorial series. Now, in this tutorial we are going to learn about class class exception and uh, we are going to, we have already seen that how we can, we can have, uh, get problem in regarding class class exception when if this type of exception occurs actually. But uh, now in this particular tutorial we are going to see that how we can resolve the problem of class class exception and how we can avoid class class exception in our Java program. Now, the particular method or particular strategy to to avoid the class class exception to use of instance of operator now what is instance of how we are gonna use uh, we will look in our in this particular tutorial only now here you can see that in my a.java class I have defined one uh, integer variable over here that is integer i equals to 10 and in my b class uh, I have extended my a class and I have defined one uh, variable over here that is uh, j equals to 15 now in my C class, I have extended uh, my B class and I have defined another variable k as 30. And in my D class, I have extended my C class and I have defined on another variable integer that is L equals 32. Now in my manager1 class, you can see that uh, I have defined one main method over here and I am creating an uh, object of type c okay now i'm creating one reference over here a a1 equals to the reference of a class and i'm initializing that particular reference with the creation of the object type of c new c so a1 uh, a1 will be the reference of a class which will point towards the class c now i am uh, just checking whether a1 is instance of a now what does it mean actually it does it means that it will check the compiler will check that the object of like a1 uh, whether it is the instance uh, of the class a if it is the instance of class a it will print a and it will create uh, the type a1 it will convert to the a1 a1 uh, reference it will convert to the a type and it will initialize into the new reference that is a2 and it will print a like this, uh, uh, you will also check that if a1 equals to the instance of b, it is a, if it is a instance of b class, then it will convert uh, a1 to b type and it will initialize in b1 and then it will print b. Like this, uh, a1 will also check uh, if a1 is instance of c, then it will uh, automatically convert to the c type and it will initialize in c1 and it will print c. Like this in D also, it will uh, if it, it if it is the uh, instance of D class, then uh, D one will be initialized uh, by the D A one will be uh, just A one will be automatically get uh, D type where we are using the downcasting over here and it will be initialized in D one, so it will print D. So let's have a look uh, like this. We have created A A one equals to new C. So what it, what will it gonna print? It will print A B and C. Why? Because A is uh, the super class over here, and B class is extending A, and C class is extending B. So all the all the variables of A B and C will be available in C class itself. So it will it will satisfy A one will be satisfying the, the, that uh, it is the instance of A itself, and also it is the instance of B itself, and also it is the instance of C itself. Now. Uh, a1 will be not will be the instance of D as because we have written that a a1 equals to new of C now if you change this particular line and if you change this new of C to new of D then what will happen then uh, if you run this program you will get the output as a B C and D as because we are creating the object type as new of D and we are initializing into a1 now here we have just written in my previous program we have written that new of C so that's why it's is getting the output as a b and c like this uh, in my last program you can see that uh, i have created one class over here that is manager2 and i have created one static void test method and which is catching one object uh, object of obj and i'm creating one reference of the object class obj now if obj is equal to, is equal to the instance of object if it is true then it will print object and it will initialize object of obj1 equals to the object of obj now if obj equals to the instance of a then it will print a 
and it will get initialized by a a1 equals to a of obj so obj will be automatically trans upcasted or sorry it means the downcasting over here obj is the type of the object type which is the parent class of every classes in java so obj will be the particular reference variable will be downcasted to to the a class type and it will initialized in a1 and it will print a1 dot i that will 10 now here also obj uh, will be checked as it is the instance of c if it is the instance of c then it will print c and c is having uh, all the all the variables of a and b so i j and k will be available and we, we will print i and j and k and also before printing uh, it will convert the obj as c type and it will print i j and k like this a d class it will check like that obj is uh, whether the instance of d if it is the instance of d then it will uh, the obj reference will be automatically converted to the d class type and it will be initialized in d1 and it will print i j k and l and we are just creating one object over here that is a a1 equals to new a and in the second line of main function program we are creating a a2 equals to the new of b over here so a2 will be the instance of a and b itself and b b1 equals <laughs> to the equals to the new of c so b b1 equals to new of c means that the b class uh, that means the b1 reference will be the reference object type of c so it will point to the c class and b2 also it will the object type of d and it will point to the d class itself and t d1 equals to new of d so it is a homogeneous declaration and it will print d1 so if we if we if we just give uh, if we just give just a1 to the test method test method so it will it will just uh, pass to the a1 object over here and it will catch the test as a1 so object obj will catch a1 and if it will check that whether the object is the instance of object or the instance of a or the instance of b or the instance of c and d so according to that it will give you the output so let's have uh, let's have a look uh, if you run this program you will get the output as below as because uh, first it will it will print uh, the object i am just maximizing it uh, so that you can uh, you can see more better i am just passing a1 uh, object uh, uh, to the test method and it will print object a and 10 so what does it mean it means that uh, object instance of object is uh, true so it will print object and also it is the instance of a also itself so it will print a and a1 dot i now here uh, in the second line a a2 equals new of b so it it will print uh, the object uh, like this a2 will be passed from there and it will print uh, it will be the instance of object class as well as the a class so it will print object a and 10 and for the b b1 equals to new of c so b1 will be the object uh, instance of the object class and a class and uh, it will print and also the c class itself as because we have used b b1 equals to new of c so it will print uh, object class reference also the a class reference also the c class and c class is having three variables over here and it will print 10 15 and 30 and after that uh, the fourth uh, member over here that is the bb2 of new of d so it will it will just uh, it will just be the instance of object class itself a class itself c class itself and d class itself as because it is a new of d and d d1 equals to new of d also and we are posting it to the test of d1 the last segment over here in the program and it will be the object of every classes like object class a class c class and d class itself so this is a this is a particular feature of the instance of operator uh, using the java particular program we using this particular operator we can avoid class class exception which which was occurring in my previous tutorial so this is this is the end of the tutorial i hope you have liked it and thanks for watching have a nice